Hello, I guess Falcher Rashku three shasket. In program, Ek BBC Alaba had dog a creas skill and a boronic ingentoch and a sales force in the Halaba. I guess a coracog neck and mora and la. As Misha on a bantine, I guess Hammy Tolicherira, Gwell Morin McGonagall call rooms in studio. Yachji, he, I guess, art of a girl Albanach and a spores. Our program is the first time we boxer Albanach Hanna Rankin, who is a sapich, who is a professional boxer. We have a lot of people who are not going to be able to do this, and we have a lot of people who are going to be able to do this. We have a lot of people who are going to be able to do this. We have a lot of people who are going to be able to do this. Welcome to 360. Thank you. Can you just tell us a bit about your role with Scottish Women in Sport and how it came about? Yes, certainly, I'd love to. Um, 2013, so seven years ago, prior to that I was working with Scottish Women's Football. I'd been there for about 20 years. Um, but after 2012, um, there was a lot of statistics given out regarding the lack of investment, the lack of media coverage in women's sport. And it seemed to me that every time I jumped in the car, Claire Balding was talking to me and telling me these things. But I suddenly thought that you know, is there anyone in Scotland that, that they hit? Do these figures represent Scotland or is the UK just another name for England? So um, when I looked at it, there was no organisation in Scotland at all that collectively brought people together who wanted to support women in sports. So that's men, women, you know, it's not just specifically women. And there wasn't. So as it's you, Iona, I can tell you that over a glass of wine one night, I decided to start up an organisation called Scottish Women in Sport. Never really gave it much thought of where it would go, what it would do. My idea at that time was basically to use social media um, to promote women in sport. But speaking to a few good people who came on board as part of the, the trustees, because we're a charity, um, we realised there was a bigger picture. So for the past seven years, we've had a conference, we've had a rewards dinner, we've had Girls Do Sport, which was a campaign with the University of West of Scotland, Women Active at Work. And we now support a lot of sports in whatever way we can to ensure that we can get as much gender equity into sport as possible. It's quite amazing, Maureen, that when you started it, there was nothing of the sort for, for Scottish women in sport. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was a kind of oversight, I think. And, uh, and the title just fell quite easy you know it's an easy title to say as well um so i've been delighted with the way the past seven years have gone it's been really good and it's been a pleasure to work in it there's so many nice people involved it's great from your time and your career working in sport how much have you seen it change over the years amazingly i mean now when i look and i'm still friendly with a lot of the people in scottish women's football when i look at where we are in terms of our national squad specifically um, I never ever thought that I would see women getting paid to play football. You know, it basically took quite a leap, I would think, about five, six years ago. And prior to that, I thought that would never happen. It might happen in other countries and it might be a trickle. But um, no, it's been an amazing change over these years. And um, the problem is we've still got a long way to go, but delighted at where we are at the moment. And such a huge change as well. I was reading that when you were at school, and playing sport, you were out in your brown knickers, you were playing on a red place park. Uh -huh. it's such a huge change now. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole bizarre thing is I never played sport to any level at all um, to be now running this organisation. But when I started working after my, my kids were born, I actually started off in Scottish amateur wrestling. Um, and I worked there for three years, which was amazing because I was accepted as a woman at that particular time on an equal footing. Um, but, um, I really, I really miss what I see the other people in sport having this great friendship, this great camaraderie that they get from sport, which if young girls do it at school and they keep these friends all through and make other friends through the clubs are with. I didn't have that because at school, when I was young, apart from the, the wonderful outfit, um, if you didn't show promise, you weren't really um, encouraged to go any further. So you basically, you know, got home as soon as it was finished and that was that. And Maureen, just like you mentioned a wee bit earlier in terms of the stats, how long is it until we reach gender parity across the board? Wow. I think it might be quite a long time. I mean, we're talking about, if you're talking about full um, gender equity, you're talking about prize money, you're talking about um, wages, appearance money, you're talking about representation, you're talking about opportunities at the base level that give the same, you're talking about visibility. So when everyone promotes sport, they've got a male and a female, so young girls know they're welcome. 
So, yeah, I'm saying that, you know, we've come, a lot, we've come a long way, but I definitely do think we've got a long way to go. If we keep up this momentum, not sure if we can, because I think during COVID we've lost a lot of it, but if we keep it up, um, hopefully I'll be proven wrong again, which is quite good. Great. Maureen, we'll be hearing more from you shortly. Ich habe hier eine Kora kann er ranken und chillen gut boxen. Es hat bis Savannah Marshall er son Title Ban in WBO. Ach, hei nicht erwähnt er ja er skas Covid mit Jake. Tante mar nicht kühl Klassik auch Kutschok. Hast du nicht erwähnt Brun Rihanna mit Flea hei erwähnt Gol gewinnen Sar nicht Spurs. professional boxer and being a professional musician, they, have, they do have things in common and for me it's the performance angle. You know, so I'm, one, I'm stepping in here in the ring and then as the other one, I'm stepping on stage. You're still under all those lights and you've still got everybody watching you and you, you're, they're waiting to see you perform and that's the exciting part about it. It gives me a total buzz, it's really good. A young young girl boxer, a tarz kunartin, than a rutinous kutrimika tahana, hai a tar taich gang vun a koprihin on a sola hugel. When I first started boxing, people thought I was a bit nuts. <laughs> I must admit. Um, obviously, doing a combat sport, people are worried about the dangers of your, your obviously your hands. Uh, for all musicians, we panic about our hands. Um, and also, also with boxing, your mouth and your teeth and playing a wind instrument as your embouchure, that sort of thing. My coach took that into consideration when I first started. You know, he made sure that I have uh, my hands wrapped regularly. I get extra padding and stuff like that. So I, I've had them taken care of right from day dot. So you're always worrying about that, but. Um, as they, they saw me gradually progress in my career and achieved more things, you know, they, they all started to kind of get behind me and support me and they're all really proud of me for following another, like, different kind of route of my career. And quite a few people have asked me, like, oh, you know, I'm thinking of getting into it for fitness, can you give me some advice? And I love it when that happens, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's real positive. How she can a boxy here because of the Kuma foot. When I was a kid, me and my sister uh, Emma, we both went to Taekwondo and we competed in that for quite a long time. And I loved love Taekwondo, I love combat sports, and I think probably the attraction to it was the same sort of discipline and practice that you apply in music. It's the same thing for doing a combat sport. You have to be very disciplined. Um, so and I, I loved it and I stopped doing it when I went into my music career. And then I wanted to get fit again. I was doing my undergraduate here in Glasgow at the Royal Conservatory of Scotland. And um, my friend was going to the Grip House, doing Thai boxing there. So I got into Thai boxing and I moved to London and I went to do, like, find a gym that did Thai boxing. And then I met my coach and he introduced me to boxing and I actually just fell in love with it that way. And I was just doing it for fitness. Um, and then I actually wanted to take it a little bit further. So I started doing it for white collar boxing to raise money for charity. Um, and to compete in it, really. Um, and then wanted to go into the next step, and the next step for me was to turn professional. So it kind of all kind of rolled on really nicely for me. I think um, boxing is a fantastic sport for that because, you know, it's, a, it's one thing I found at the time that I could really switch off to. You know, like I could work so hard in the gym training that I would just knock myself out, you know, a <laughs> flat out cold to sleep at the end of it. And, you know, it's, it was kind of a, almost a relief that I could kind of switch off from that, that sort of pain and the grief and things. So it really helped me get through that, my frustrations and angers as well. So, um, yeah, it was a real lifesaver for me, must admit. Bahana i de Grunig, maar ik heet che alapene a koshing chichtel ne krunje, as je wie in IBO super well to wit de leeg, on the Davilis and Neug Jeek. Last year I became Scotland's first ever female world champion, um, and to do that at home here in Glasgow, um, and actually on the BBC, <laughs> that was a momentous occasion, I think, really, and uh, I still get kind of goosebumps thinking about it, so yeah, probably one of the best moments of my life.
every single boxer wants to win a world title at home. Um, and I must admit, it was like s super stressful because <laughs> you're at home with all your family and friends are there. Um, but actually, it was also gives you that sort of energy and excitement for the night. So yeah, it made a, made a huge difference and kind of buoyed me up for the fight. So it was brilliant. I, I know I belong at world level. Um, I know I belong as a world champion and I'm really lucky. And I've got a chance to fight for another world title this time at middleweight. It's a great opportunity for me to bring another world title back to Scotland and I can't wait to do it. Le over in COVID in the Egypt, had in boxer a had Jacob Dicker playing a good. It would be fair unyer, because in Carum Ain glues it to us can in either middleweight, I guess cheat on the Krenya Ain or some in Darna Turis. It was really frustrating at the beginning because I was on a roll. I had a fantastic fight in February. Um, I stopped the girl in the third round, and it was a really great performance for myself. I was probably one of my best performances I think in the ring and I was on a roll you know and I was really excited about going to fight next and then I would have probably been in America in May with my promotional team out there but obviously that all got stalled with Covid and at first I was really frustrated because I felt like oh it's kind of like stopping where I want to go but actually the sort of break has given me a chance to really focus and work on loads of things in the gym and um, I was lucky to have a, a private space to work in with my coach so I actually used the time really wisely, um, a bit of a blessing in disguise, and really levelled up. So, actually, now is, is looking back at it, it's been it's been a great opportunity for me to really improve. So, very, very happy about it. Ahana is on Gila Baka to Flowney and Alapanahila, and Asia Pilar Aichkehin Alenta. You know, I think if, especially uh, as a world champion and uh, a world champion to be again, I feel that, you know, you should be out there setting an example for younger people coming through to show that it is possible. You know, if you want to go and follow a career as a professional boxer, you can do that. You know, that is a pathway that's available to you. If you want to go and be a professional classical musician, you can do it. Or you want to go and work in a rock band, you can do it. If you want to put in all the, like, the time and the effort and the work and that's required and get a strong team around you, that's a really important part. I think that you can go and do anything and I want to inspire a younger generation to believe that they can go and do that, especially here in Scotland. So much talent and waiting just to come through and I really want people to feel that they can do it. So yeah, let's go. Maureen, I just love Hannah's story because on paper, being a classical musician and a professional boxer, they couldn't the two couldn't be any further apart, but she really does link them as performing under the lights, doesn't she? Yes, I mean, she's a wonderful individual and she promotes both her classical music and boxing and loves them both. And, and I think what it shows is that you don't have to just specialise in one thing. You know, if you set your mind to it, as she says, you can do anything. And Scotland's first female world champion, she's creating history in front of our eyes. That's just amazing to see. Yeah, as I say, I think she's quite special. And I was delighted to be able to actually watch her box live um, this year, I think, at Paisley Lagoon. Um, and she's very serious and very focused. And then when you meet her afterwards, you know, she's very quiet and, and very unassuming. So it's, it's quite a contradiction in terms at times. But uh, I wish her all the best for the success for her next, next big fight. And she also talks about being an inspiration and kind of leave, leading, leaving a legacy for girls coming through. That just That's really important, isn't it? Well, we talk all the time about role models, you know, and, and in many occasions we don't actually hit that right button. I actually think that Hannah, Hannah does. You know, she, um, she goes out there, she works hard, she trains hard, she enjoys her life, um, but she also realises that she wants to and has to give something back, and she does that too. So, yeah, I think she's a special young lady and the thing is everyone's kind of coped with this pandemic in so many different ways but hannah she's used this time as she says in the vt there to level up that's she's onto something isn't she yeah well what i found quite amusing there was the fact that you know she had the bassoon out with the face guard you know things are difficult how difficult can it be trying to play the bassoon with your face guard on but yes i think she is um she's bringing a lot to the sport um, she's leading the way. There's not that very many female boxers. I know that in Boxing Scotland they have got a, a good policy where they're trying to bring more through, but I think it'll take a while, but she's definitely a great role model for them and for young girls in particular. And especially, like she was saying, in terms of boxing and letting her emotions out, she's, she's someone who's using this sport to her advantage, especially in terms of helping with grief. I mean, it really does just show how, import, how important sport is. 
Yes, I think if we were to sit down and look at all the different areas that sport actually helps support, you know, there's a great push on in terms of mental health and sport and what the benefits, but in terms of academic, um, you know, success and sport, there's, there's success there, there's research to prove that as well. So sport can bring a lot to the individual, just even in terms of camaraderie, meeting people and um, feeling part of something. I think we all feel so apart at the moment that when sport does get back to 100%, it will be amazing. Absolutely, thank you. Ha Christy Grimshaw, er is skilling balkosha a lace again, Sean Alaba, agus er tev ila huain. Bo paran gu Miami, agus er son greishek mets and rang. Ha Christy er hena makur recurrent ek AC Milan, ag sa inis an dochus ar a shelly card ag lachgu. Get out there, but as long as the team's winning as well, like that's the main thing. But yeah, can, personally, it's very good for me as well. But if I bake, how Christy, if you're on a goal, if I'll cause I actually was born in Cody and I grew up in actually Glasgow, just outside of Glasgow. And obviously, as any other footballer kind of starts, they I just played on obviously there's a pitch across my house and just played on with all the boys and they all knock on each other's doors and go out um outside there and on the streets and that and then when you start primary school um about four I just got into it then I would always be dragged into playing games and loved it from then. Um I think I was we'd won an under 17s, I think we'd won like the league and then there was nothing after that at that point. So we, I jumped up to like the reserve team and then I was playing well for them and I think then I, I had a really really good relationship with the first team coach at that point um, who was Alan Smith and he just like helped me a lot and he brought me in training with the first team and everything so like I had good training from him from when I was like 16, 17 so I appreciated that a lot. I think it helped me a lot. Horsey Christy Skolarach like Oli on the Miami. We're looking around as a family and like looking at what, how I could keep playing football so much and go to uni at the same time. And then after one of my games, there was actually someone there that said, um, would you be interested in going to America? I've got lots of friends there who are interested, like the, who run the scholarship kind of program. And I've never really been away from home. And I think that was a good, I think mom and dad kind of pushed me to do that just to, help me like spread my wings a little bit and just get away from home um, and give me like some confidence and then obviously I think it's the best thing I've ever done. You have to deal with a lot like balancing all the studies and the football every day and then on the road and then waking up next morning for like university and that um, and there's a lot of obviously I think in America I think, as we all know the technical side isn't as good as maybe the physical side so I think I was a little bit smaller then and um, definitely Physically, like helping a lot and mentally. As you came to heal Christy and Ring Orper, or some coromach like the mates. Ach, Gunti Christy and Skipper Frank Yakakal, as you came to touch them shears for a free of league. The agency who represents me actually, um, one of them, the main guy, lives in Miami. But like, coincidentally, I was really lucky to have had him and I was put in contact with him, and then obviously he then works his magic and um, then that's how the move to France came about. Obviously he wants to be playing like the best football that he can play. So um, I think in France like developed me like so much 
as a player, like, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for moving to France. Um, but I think it was like just after a year, I think I was wanting to move on and see what else there was. And then also this came around and it was actually, it was quite early on actually, but it's kind of like we were talking about it a little bit. And as soon as, as soon as my agent said like, mm, potentially see Milan, I was like, focus on that. <laughs> focus on that, get that done. <laughs> Obviously, because it is such a huge club. They're already saying like, no, have to win trophies, have to get into Champions League and everything. So. I'm very ambitious and I love I love being a part of that. Like doing as best as we can. Ha Christi, a lent in a came in at Rose Riley. Che a chleich do ACF Milan, Agus Ronishin, a vunik ruruir, kupin and crinion and ban, la skip in the hitalch. There's a team in, Mil in Milan, but um, wasn't associated with AC Milan, this is the first one. Um, but yeah, I'm actually not, like, I know obviously she was very, very successful. Um, but I'm not very familiar with her actual story. I've heard of her, and yeah, I mean, I can score as many goals as that, then, I mean. That's something to look for. Click it today, Alapanak Ela, a high clue a cosmic hain on Sunday Touch, she lana Cleland, Agasa Christi at Jenny Fuer, the Shinconum Ein Click and Ailana, like Emma, it the Milan is Florentina on Sunday Luck. We have a banter, I'm sure, going back and forth about that. Um, yeah, that would be really interesting, especially she's a goal scorer and just have to try and get her to not score any goals. <laughs> but yeah, that would be interesting. I'm excited for that. Le Jew Toshok Toshiki at Milan, a Christian Dawkins gave a lead other Shelly Kara Glockug, was on Coromine called the Skip and a Halopa on Sanam de Chak. Obviously, it's everyone's ambition, but if I just focus on club and playing well in club football, like that will all happen naturally, hopefully. And as long as I'm playing well for the club, then we'll see, we'll see in the future if that's going to happen. Maureen Christie is yet another woman in sport, really showing that anything is possible. It's like um, a comic book story. You know, years ago, and they, you pick up the dandy or the beano, and they would be writing this story about this little person who made it big. I mean, this is actually happening, and there's a young woman from Aberdeen, so it's amazing. And there's, you know, there are quite a few stories out there inspirational. Obviously, she was um, alluding to Rose Riley, who was a forerunner of them all. Um, but it's great to great to hear these things. And Christy, she'll be such an inspiration for girls coming through the ranks now too. Well, you know, I worked in football for over 20 years and Aberdeen as an area, Granton Primary School or Granton Secondary School, I'm not sure which one, they were responsible for bringing forward so many young female players, um, both uh, Suzanne and Shelley. Um, I'm going to say Cowie, but that's, that's uh, Shelley's, uh, Suzanne's married name. But the twins were great players and Aberdeen has got a great reputation for bringing forward excellent young female players. Well, they're doing something right up there then. Definitely, yes. And the thing is, Christy had mentioned in the VT there that she really wants to break into the Scotland squad. But kind of after the Women's World Cup, that squad, they're really starting to become household names. They are, um, but I think Shelley Kerr's always on the lookout for talent to add to it because things happen. You know, not everyone's fit 100% of the time and to be adding quality to her squad, that's what Shelley wants to do. But household names are where, and it was just an absolutely wonderful time. I loved every single second of it and well deserved. Absol well deserved. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. I guess another thing, a story that I just love is one of my colleagues had told me back at the time last summer that his son is about four or five years old and at that age, he wasn't differentiating between men and women playing football. He said to his dad, Dad, I want an Aaron Cuthbert shirt. I mean, that's, that's such a great thing to hear and, and see, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, I've heard a few uh, stories like that, but that's the problem. They are just few and far between, so we have to build them up just to make them the normal rather than, wow, isn't that exciting? Just make it the normal. Every little girl wanting to be um, one of the role models from the Scotland's national team would be great. How do we change that? Is it through education at a young age as, as we go through the ranks? What sort of needs to happen? Well, I think the problem is it's, it's not just one solution because it's not just one problem. You know, visibility for young girls to see um, their sports being played on television is not really there. You know, Alba do a, a great job, but we need more of that. Um, we look at opportunities within sports themselves. They have to make sure that when they're promoting their opportunities that they make sure that they're visible, that young girls think they're welcome. We have to realise as well that there's, and people may disagree with this, but I think there's a different way to coach 
females than there are males, you know, and an awful lot of the young girls can be turned off by the macho coaching culture. So we have to look and make sure that we deliver um, an experience to them that they want to be there and make it user friendly. So there's so many different answers um, or questions um, that I can't give you the one answer, but if I could wave the magic wand, I definitely would, yeah. Are these changes happening now? Are we seeing this being implemented? Yes, I think they are. I mean, I have to be fair, I do think they are. I think if you're involved in women's sport, you're impatient, and so you should be, because you want the change and you want the equity. Um, but the slowly but surely things are changing. We've got some mindsets, which again is a big, big difficult one to change, some mindsets to change, but um, the ones that don't want to change, let's leave them behind and walk forward with ones that do. Brilliant, thank you. Well, han fair for vor shachet. I guess han SWPL a toshug er in jero hiachgain. Ha gamachin mora er fara na mes Glasgow City a nai Celtic. Gamachi shay bio er BBC Alaba. Shaw mara kain turus megerig a chlich yet. The Cheval, this devil Lauder, and Ruin. How the goal stay? Christian Ashford, the boxer, I guess Celtic have been looking before. A poor guy, Shin Shetty, but Glasgow City, in the key at all line, the way he's holding, she's handing Shin, but if they push it. Er, but she's still the last. Alexander, Robertson, on the Nerf again, it's just as hard as I am, it's been up again. Shaq had to do with the bar off the skipper, Kelly Clark. Larson in the game, so I've been here, kicking you again. I guess a key at game, getting a day, son. I guess Puglia Board is on Glasgow City, Sark skipper, Haddish in a three, Pungia, forget it. Apart from the weather, it's great that the women's game's back, isn't it? Um, yeah, it was lovely to see and lots of excitement there. But yes, apart from the weather, it looked pretty tragic out there. And the thing is, so much excitement as well with the women's game, especially in the SWPL. There's been so much movement with players. Teams are really wanting to make their mark this year, aren't they? Yes, um, I suppose they're, they're just desperate to get out of the, the, the docks or whatever the, the saying is. Um, not having been able to play, you know, the way their season finished because of the time change and then COVID coming. <clears throat> so they have been denied football for quite a long while. So they'll be desperate to get out there and to get some football played. And two games this Sunday, you can watch live on BBC Alba and the BBC Sports Scotland website. That's huge, isn't it? It's pretty amazing, I have to say that. Um, you know, I picked that up on Twitter um, recently and thought, that's the first time that's ever happened. You know, it, it's like you were saying before, Iona, things are changing. When could we say that's happened before? So, uh, yeah, it's a great. And I think at this time when people are really looking for that fix, you know, there's a lot of complaints about you know, the other type of football that people play being shown in stations that you have to pay for. You know, you can go and watch this um, and enjoy it in the comfort of your home. Did you ever think you would see that two games, two women's games, <laughs> to be able to watch live from the comfort of your own home? No, I mean, when I was working with football, when we got it covered 20 years ago, we went for the highlights package because, to be honest, at that time, the product wasn't very good. You've got a product that basically supports two games and people will enjoy watching it. And it's so important, especially just now, to keep the chat around the women's game going, especially during this pandemic. Yeah, I think it's been a bit disappointing that you know during the pandemic um for the majority of media they have focused on the history of if you're looking at football you know they've been dragging up the history of men's football let's be fair they don't have an awful lot of history to drag up in the women's game but there's so many good stories about so many good individuals 
that a little bit of work would have taken them and it would have added something different. Um, so yes, it's amazing that we've now got this and we can look forward to it. And I think that's what's been missing. Nobody's had anything really to look forward to because we don't know where we're going or when we're getting there. So we've now got something like this, which is great. What more do you think could be done and needs to be done really to boost the women's game? Well, obviously, the main and the easiest thing is to say cash injection because that will help. It will help bring up the professionalism. It will help. You look at the difference now with teams like Celtic, Rangers, you know, Hearts coming in, they're investing in, and we have got a better product through that. So obviously money does help. Um, but I think uh, collectively, again, the media can help by promoting it a bit more. And obviously the national team, as they go on to the next couple of games which are happening pretty soon another success story bringing it to the forefront and then for the scottish fa to promote that as they should to make the most of that opportunity would definitely i think encourage more young girls and young boys to follow the game and there's even um s smaller but very important changes for example hibernian changing the name from hibernian ladies to hibernian women that's a that's an important part too yes yeah, so it was always a bit of a a challenge and you know people used to speak about ladies football but then there were women football clubs so I think whatever makes them feel comfortable so that they can go out and promote themselves I don't really get hung up on words too much um, but if people feel you know the necessity for that and it makes them feel better about promoting themselves yeah go ahead and do it and if they see that as a big thing that's good because they've then reached another um, barrier and broken it. Are you pleased with how things are going? Yeah, I'm delighted. I mean, definitely looking back seven years ago um, to what I thought we might achieve. I think um, in terms of um, awareness now of women in sport, um, there's much more out there. There's probably a lot more kind friends that are going to help us. But as I say, we need to build that army up. Brilliant. It was great to have you. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you. Well, she now some program Ella. Mahang for the morning or some of them kuchaks in studio. For the chef Garland till gach shock in our YouTube, Marshin Jankin shock in each chef give a quarter drive. Can be chef Garland till I guess nach kal shuf programs and be. Can I get a show on program akivshe? Marshin skill of a nayak fat is farshing I guess kumavara vakoyet. But that he spores for a nach na halbe. Marshin live and dress.